So we are going to do another differential equation battle. Ty prime plus 2y equals t to the fourth versus Ty double prime plus t minus 2y prime plus y equals 0 with the extra condition in this case that y of 0 equals 0. Now in both of these cases notice that the coefficients are no longer constant which means that our standard methods for solving homogeneous differential equations and undetermined coefficients are not going to work for us in these cases. So let's start by taking a look at this first differential equation. What we notice first of all is the highest derivative is a y prime, which means this is actually a first order linear differential equation. And in order to see that a little bit better, let's get the y prime just by itself with a coefficient of one. And we can do that by dividing everything here by t. That'll get us that y prime plus 2 over ty equals, and then t to the fourth over t is t cubed. Now we see that this is in the form of a first order linear differential equation, and we want to find an integrating factor in order to make this possible to evaluate. Remember, that's going to let us write this entire differential equation as a product rule case. So that integrating factor mu is going to be e to the integral of whatever is multiplied by y. So in this case, 2 over t, and then with respect to t. Now if we do this, we'll get that mu is equal to e to, well the integral of 2 over t will be 2 times the natural log of t. And remember we don't have to worry about plus c because that'll just multiply the whole equation by a constant, doesn't really matter. Now notice in this case, what we can do is rewrite e to the 2 ln t as e to the ln t and then squared, because this way if we multiply the powers we get the same result. But now e to the natural log of t we can rewrite as just t. So our integrating factor mu becomes just t squared. That means we can go back to our differential equation here. If we multiply everything in this equation through by t squared, we will get t squared y prime and then plus 2ty equals t to the fifth power. And now what we see is on the left side of the equation, we can write this as a product rule case. So we get the derivative with respect to t of t squared times y. Notice if we do this out, we get t squared y prime and then plus the derivative of t squared gives us 2t times y. That equals t to the fifth, so if we want to solve this, we take the integral with respect to t on both sides, just like this. On the left side of the equation, integral and derivative will cancel out. We get t squared y. That's going to equal, over here, the integral of t to the fifth will be one-sixth t to the sixth power plus c. Now all we need to do to solve for y is divide by t squared. So we get that our final result y equals 1 over 6 times t to the fourth, t to the sixth over t squared, plus c over t squared. So that is our final answer for this first differential equation. So we were able to solve this first differential equation with non-constant coefficients by interpreting it as a first order linear differential equation. But if we take a look at our second differential equation over here, we notice that the highest order is 2. This is a second order differential equation, which means we cannot use first order linear. And remember, homogeneous differential equations won't work here because it's non-constant, and undetermined coefficients will also not work properly in this case. So we're going to have one more method left to use, which is Laplace transforms. Now if you already have experience with Laplace transforms to solve these kinds of equations, you can try it out right now. If you're newer to the method of Laplace transforms, I've linked to a Laplace transform table in the description. You can open that up and use that to solve the different parts of these equations. So remember, we can take the Laplace transform without doing any integrals, just using a table. So try and solve this differential equation and get back to the original using inverses. Once you're done, you can come back and watch the full video for the solution. So it's time to solve this differential equation here. We're going to start out by taking the Laplace transform of each of the individual parts on the left side here, and then we will put them all together for one equation. To start out, we're going to need the Laplace transform of t times y double prime. 
Now, there is a specific formula for the Laplace transform of t times some function. You can check the video in the description for the derivation of this. But this Laplace transform is going to equal negative the derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of y double prime by itself. So once we've gotten to here, we just need the Laplace transform of y double prime. Again, there's a video in the description where I derive this function as well. But this is going to give us the derivative with respect to s again. And this Laplace transform is s squared big Y of s minus s y of 0 and then minus y prime of 0. So all we have to do is differentiate this with respect to s. First of all, before we do that, notice y of 0 is 0. So we can ignore this term here and we'll differentiate each of these parts. First of all, for this first term, we'll use the product rule. We have negative s squared y prime of s. And then minus the derivative of s squared is 2s big y of s. Then if we look at the derivative with respect to s of y prime of 0, well, y prime of 0 is just a number. So that vanishes. We don't have to worry about that either. This is our first Laplace transform. All right, I've written down this first Laplace transform. The one other that I want to do before we write everything out is the Laplace transform of t times y prime. So this is going to be a similar case to what we have here. First of all, it'll be negative the derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of y prime is going to give us s big y of s minus y of 0. Just like before, y of 0 is equal to 0. That's going to go away. And we just differentiate this part. That'll equal, by the product rule, we have negative s big y prime of s. And then the derivative of s is 1. So we just have big y of s. So that's the answer to our second Laplace transform. And we can start plugging everything into this differential equation over here. So I'm going to step out of frame to give space for us to write down this equation. Let's start by writing down the Laplace transform of ty double prime. That's going to give us negative s squared big y prime of s minus 2s big y of s. Then we're going to add the Laplace transform of ty prime. That's going to be minus s big y prime of s and then minus y of s. Then we have a minus 2y prime. If we do the Laplace transform of minus 2y prime, we're going to get minus 2s big y of s. And then we'll have a minus y of 0. Remember, y of 0 is still 0 right here, so we can ignore that part as well. And then the Laplace transform of y is just big y of s by definition. So this is all the parts of the equation that we need. And we're going to set this whole thing equal to the Laplace transform of 0. Well, the integral of 0 is just going to be 0. So that is our answer. Now we just need to add everything up here. Notice for the y prime of s parts, we have a minus s squared minus s, big y prime of s. And then for the big y of s, notice we have a plus y of s here and a minus y of s here. Those two are going to cancel. And then we're going to be left with minus 2s minus 2s gives us a minus 4s big y of s. And that equals 0. So you might notice that we've turned our first differential equation here into another differential equation, which might seem like we're not making much progress. But actually, this one is going to be much easier to solve. So you might think to use a first order linear differential equation method on this, and that would work. But we are actually going to look at this as a separable differential equation. So I'll walk through the steps. The first thing we want to do is add 4s big Y of s on both sides. So we'll have minus s squared minus s big Y prime of s equals 4s big Y of s. And what we want to do is get all of the y's on the left side of the equation and all of the s's on the right side of the equation. So first of all, we'll divide by y of s. And then second of all, we'll divide by this term here. So on the left side, we get y prime of s and then divided by y of s. And that's going to equal, over here, we have a 4s over negative s squared minus s. And we can simplify this a little bit. First of all, notice there's a negative in everything in the bottom. 
So let's bring that to the top and make it positive in the denominator. The other thing we can do is notice there's an s on the top, and we can factor an s out from everything in the bottom. So we can actually write this as negative 4 over s plus 1, which is going to be much nicer for us. Now that we've done this, all we need to do is solve for y. In order to do that, we can integrate with respect to s on both sides, just like this. So on the left side of the equation, if we think about substituting u equals big Y of s, then du is going to be big Y prime of s ds. And notice we have big Y prime of s ds right here. So that gives us the integral of big Y prime of s ds is du. And then we divide by u. And that's equal to, on the left side, we have negative 4 times the natural log of s plus 1 plus c as our solution. Then we evaluate this integral. The integral of du over u is just going to be the natural log of the absolute value of u. And we know that u is big Y of s, just like that. So now we want to solve for y of s. We just take e to the power of both sides to cancel out that natural log. Now before we write down our solution for this, let's think about how we can simplify the right side if we do e to the power of what we have there. So e to the negative 4 natural log s plus 1 plus c. Remember, first of all, that we can split up this exponent here as e to the c times e to the negative 4 natural log s plus 1, which I'm going to write as natural log s plus 1 and then times negative 4. Because remember, if we multiply two powers like this, we can write it as e to the natural log s plus 1 and then to the power of negative 4. And what we have on the inside here is just s plus 1, because the e and the natural log cancel out. And then we have to the negative 4 power. This e to the c, we can just write as some other constant, because e to a constant is another constant. So we write a times s plus 1 to the negative 4. This means that we can write the solution to this equation here as big Y of s equals and then what we have as a times s plus 1 to the negative 4. And now what we want to do is take the inverse Laplace transform of this. So I've cleared the board, and all we need to do now is take the inverse Laplace transform of our function big Y of s. To start out, I'm going to rewrite this with the s plus 1 to the negative 4 in the denominator. So we get a times 1 over s plus 1 to the power of 4. And this is the part where you want to check your Laplace transform table to figure out the Laplace transform of which function gives us this as the answer. First of all, remember that when we do the inverse Laplace transform of a times 1 over s plus 1 to the fourth, we can bring this constant a to the outside. Because just like with integration, if we have a constant in the integral, we pull it to the outside. Well, the Laplace transform is a type of integral. So this is equal to a times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 to the fourth. So now we take a look at our tables or think in our heads, what function has a Laplace transform that looks like this? Well, there is one identity that might help us out in this case. And that is the Laplace transform. And some textbooks will write it differently than others. But the Laplace transform of t to the k power divided by k factorial. This is actually equal to 1 over s to the k plus 1. So if we want this to be 1 over s to the fourth, that's going to be 1 over s to the 3 plus 1. So we'll have the Laplace transform of t cubed over 3 factorial equals 1 over s to the 3 plus 1, which is 4. And now we're almost to the result that we have here. We just need to turn this s into an s plus 1. Well, is there any formula with Laplace transforms that turns s into s plus 1? There actually is. It is the shifting identity, which says the Laplace transform of e to the at times t cubed over 3 factorial equals 1 over s minus a to the fourth. Or in other words, if we multiply by e to the at, that has the effect of changing s to s minus a. 
if we want an s plus 1 in here, that's going to be the same as s minus negative 1. And that means we want our a over here to be negative. So we have e to the negative t. This is the Laplace transform that we need to get the answer that we want. So all we need to do now is write this here as our inverse Laplace transform answer. We get a, and then I'm going to bring this 3 factorial to the front because that's just a constant. And then we have e to the negative t times t cubed. So we've written down all the parts that we have here. Notice a over 3 factorial is just a constant. So I'm going to erase this 3 factorial because a, like a constant, is going to operate exactly the same. And this is the final solution to our differential equation. That is the power of Laplace transforms, is it can take differential equations even when they don't have constant coefficients and turn it into things that we're able to deal with. And then we can take the inverse Laplace transform using all of our awesome identities just like this.